All right, folks, welcome back. So in this video, we are continuing our discussion of the second derivative and concavity, or where a function is concave up and concave down. And we're going to talk about how to identify concavity algebraically. And this just means how are we going to determine where a function is concave up and concave down precisely using what we know about calculus. So let's just jump right into this by starting with an example. So let's consider a function g that is equal to 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 3x minus 17. And what I want to know is on what intervals is g concave up and on what intervals is g concave down. So finding where a function is concave up and concave down is very similar to finding where a function is increasing and decreasing. So we know that the function is concave up when the second derivative is positive, and it's concave down when the second derivative is negative. This is really similar to how a function is increasing when the first derivative is positive and decreasing when the first derivative is negative. So we're going to follow a very similar process to the first derivative test, but this time with the second derivative. Okay, so our plan is to first find where the second derivative is equal to zero. These are our inflection points. This is like finding the critical points, except now we're finding the inflection points finding the second derivative and setting it equal to zero. Then in order to determine which intervals are concave up and which are concave down, we are going to choose test points, one for each interval that are made by the inflection points, and check the sign of the second derivative in each interval. So with the first derivative test, we would have checked the sign of the first derivative in each interval. Now we're just checking with the second derivative. So if the second derivative is positive over an interval, it's concave up, and if it's negative in that interval, it's concave down. So let's try this out. So our first step is to find the first derivative. So I'm just going to follow power rule instead of saying it all out. I'm going to trust that you know this part at this point. So the exponents come in front. The derivative of 3x is just 3 and the derivative of 17 is 0. Then I simplify. I have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3 as my first derivative. Now I just repeat this process to find the second derivative. So bring the exponents in front. The derivative of 3 is 0. And so for my second derivative, I'm getting 3x squared minus 12x. And what I want to do is set the second derivative equal to 0 in order to find the inflection points. So I have 3x squared minus 12x is equal to 0. These both have a 3x in them. I'm going to factor that out. And I'm left with 3x times x minus 4. Make sure you're not moving stuff over to the other side and dividing by anything because you'll get rid of an answer that way. So we need to just factor this and I'm left with 3x equals 0, which means x is 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 4. So this example has two inflection points. It has inflection points at 0 and at 4. So just real quick, something I didn't point out in the step process is that inflection points also occur when the second derivative is undefined. So our second derivative is 3x squared minus 12x, that's just a polynomial, it is always defined everywhere, so it doesn't have any undefined points. So these two values are the only inflection points, 0 and 4. At the end of this video, I'll do a second example where I show you a case where we do need to look at the undefined places, but this function, this second derivative, doesn't have any undefined places. So we're good to go with just these two. So I'm going to put these points on a number line, and I'm going to choose a test point in each interval, and then check the sign of the second derivative at each of those test points. So I'm choosing negative 1, 1, and 5. You can choose whatever points you want that are in those intervals. And we're going to take each of those points and plug them into the second derivative. Remember, we're looking for where the second derivative is positive or negative. That'll tell us if it's concave up or concave down there. So I'm just going to go ahead, plug these points in. It's not very exciting. I'm just going to have them come across the screen here, and hopefully you can do the same work on your own. You can pause if you want and make sure you know how to plug these into the second derivative, but the process is the same as we've been doing for the first derivative test. So I'm getting that at negative one, the second derivative is positive 15. So that is a positive value there. At one, the second derivative is negative nine, so a negative value. Then at 5, the second derivative is positive 15, so a positive value. So this means in my first and last intervals, the sign of the second derivative is positive, so the function is concave up. And in the middle interval, the sign of the second derivative is negative, so it's concave down. So I can just write these out in interval notation. I say that the function is concave up from negative infinity to 0, unioned with the interval from 4 to infinity, and the function is concave down from 0 to 4. And there we go. 
that's where the function is concave up and concave down. So something we can do to reassure ourselves that we've done this properly is to graph this function. So I'm seeing that on the outside portions of the graph, it is concave up. So it's like a cup or a cave facing upward. And then in that little middle portion between zero and four on the X, we are concave down. So the function's facing downward there. And I can just highlight that these two points are the inflection points. I found them very precisely using the second derivative. I didn't have to guess or just look at the graph to think about where they probably are. I know it's exactly those two points by taking the second derivative and setting it equal to zero. Okay, let's try a second example. So let's consider a function k, where k is equal to 1 over x plus x squared, and we want to find where is k concave up and where is it concave down. So our steps, again, are to find where the second derivative is equal to 0 or where it's undefined in order to find our inflection points. Then we will check the sign of the second derivative in each of the intervals that are made by the inflection points to see where it is positive for concave up and negative for concave down. All right, so I would pause the video now and at minimum, try to find the first and second derivatives of k. And if you want, you can go through the whole process and figure out where the function is concave up and concave down. Then after you pause, we'll come back together and finish the problem. So in order to take the derivative, which is my first step, I'm going to think of 1 over x as x to the negative 1. Then that negative 1 comes in front, I decrease the exponent by 1. Same with the second term, so the 2 comes in front. Now instead of simplifying this or making it look better, I'm just going to go straight ahead and do the second derivative, because that's what I'm looking for here. That's what I need to do this problem. So the exponent comes in front, then the derivative of 2x is just 2. Then I have a negative negative 2, so that's a positive 2. And that negative exponent brings it down into the denominator. So I have that my second derivative is 2 over x cubed plus 2. Okay, so I'm looking for the inflection points. Those are the places where the second derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. And just looking at this, I'm noticing that it is undefined at x equals 0. So if I plug in 0, I would be dividing by 0, which we cannot do. We cannot divide by 0. So the second derivative is undefined at 0. That's going to be one of my inflection points. Now, to find any other inflection points, I need to take the second derivative and set it equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. I will move the positive 2 over to the other side. So I have 2 over x cubed is negative 2. Then I will multiply the x cubed over and divide by negative 2. So I'm getting that x cubed is equal to negative 1. Now I just need to solve for x, so I'm taking the cube root of both sides. We can take the cube root of a negative number. The cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1. So my second inflection point is x equals negative 1. I'm not spending too much time on this process since I'm assuming you've done some problems like this before where you're just setting it equal to 0. So feel free to pause the video and look over the steps if you need to take a second and make sure you're following. All right, so we're going to take the inflection points and put them on a number line and choose test points to help us find the sign of the second derivative in each interval. So for my test points, I'm choosing negative 2, negative 1 half, and 1. As always, you can choose whatever points you'd like as long as they lie in each interval. And I want to know the sign of the second derivative for each of those points. So let's go ahead and plug them in. For negative 2, I'm getting 2 over negative 2 cubed plus 2. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So I have negative 1 fourth plus 8 over 4. 8 over 4 is 2. And that's equal to 7 over 4. So that's a positive value, meaning the sign of the second derivative is positive in that first interval, so it's concave up there. I have 2 over negative 1 half cubed plus 2. That's 2 over negative 1 eighth. I multiply by the reciprocal to get that fraction out of that fraction. So I have 2 times negative 8. That's negative 16, and I add the 2 which is equal to negative 14. Again, I'm kind of just going through this fast because I think that you can do this on your own. It might just involve a little remembering how to deal with fractions or just slowing down and making sure you know how to do it. So feel free to pause and do this part on your own if you need to. The conclusion here though is that at negative one half, the second derivative is a negative 14, which is a negative value, meaning the function is concave down here in this interval. Then my last test point is one. So I have two over one cubed plus two. That is two plus two, which is equal to four. Four is a positive value. So in that final interval, the function is concave up. I can write this out formally using intervals. So I say the function is concave up from negative infinity to negative one and from zero to infinity. 
and it's concave down in the middle interval from negative one to zero. Similar to the last example, I can graph this just to make sure my answers are making sense with how the graph looks. So here I've graphed one over x plus x squared. That was my original function k. And I'm gonna just highlight the places where I have inflection points, specifically at negative one and at zero. At zero, it looks like a vertical asymptote since the function is undefined there and the second derivative is undefined there. So I'll just highlight that vertical line. Then I see that the function is concave up on the outside intervals. So from negative infinity to negative one and from zero to infinity. And we just have a small portion of concave down from negative one to zero. So I'm feeling confident with my answers and I have found where this function is concave up and concave down. All right, hopefully you feel a little more confident identifying concavity algebraically when you're given the function. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.